Hey guys, Scott from AristaCobb.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, boy. Good morning. We just finished eating some biscuits that were a fail. They were supposed to be <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits. What we got, bacon, cheese, and biscuit. <laughs> biscuits. And we were commenting how we didn't realize how much moisture egg brings to the party because, man, that was one dry biscuit. Yeah. So uh, that, we need to go back there and maybe later today. And tell Just them. get our egg. Get our egg. We, we want our We demand. I'll have to check the receipt. <coughs> wonder if they charged me for the egg. Because there were two biscuits the same way. I said, can I have two bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits? And I got two bacon, cheese biscuits. Sorry about the extra noise today. We've got the uh, the heater on the fan. I'm sorry, the fan on the uh, on the wood stove running back behind us here. I'm hoping that you're not being uh, overwhelmed by the sound. But if you are, that's that's what it is. But there shouldn't be any stupid clicking this time, except for this. Click, 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 click. But other than that, it should be better. <laughs> All right. We've got so, our microphone uh, back. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, I just got back from Florida. And one of the things that happened was <coughs> got to go to dinner with the Dagners, Jason and Jay Dagner, had a great time. And one of the things that went down there was I got myself a Dagner pipe. Nice. And they, uh, they gave me some of the tobacco that they've been pressing. Um, I don't know if you followed what they're doing, Mm-mm. but they've been experimenting with, a, with taking tobaccos, various blends that, that they know they already like. And then pressing them, compacting them down right. into a really tight compressed cake. I've seen people and do that. They, they're cutting it, and um, you know, they're again, they're they're starting. Some people have been taking the stuff that they don't like, setting it aside, and then they'll press that all together. Maybe spritz it with some uh, sugar and water and other things. Try to make it more make something better, better out of it. And I yeah. guess that even works. Like aging can help make a tobacco taste yeah. better. But they've been starting with tobaccos they like, compressing them, coming up with something unique. So this is one that they call Frog on the River. So Mm. it's one of the Frog Morton products mixed with Mississippi River, Yeah, which we've had that as well before. So they gave me a little bit of this. I smoked some of this while I was there. And um, I'm going to smoke a little bit more (coughs) in my pipe, my Dagner pipe. There it is. Beautiful. So I got a a Dublin. Now, just so you guys know, the first generation of, um, the first edition of Dagner pipes, um, when they're gone, they're gone. And then uh, Jason's going to be introducing then the second generation of, really? of pipes. And um, the uh, the Dublins are all that's left right now. So uh, when these are gone, they're gone. Here, check that out. It's beautiful. I love the uh, the stem on that. It's gorgeous. That Little is. metal brass rings on there as well. Wow. We got to see these when they were unveiled in uh, in Nashville, Nashville right. this year. They're really cool. It was last year. Last year. Yeah. It's time, been a long year. Flies, a short it? year. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right. So with this cake, you, you, you need less than you think you need because it is compressed. And you break that up a little bit. And uh, so what are you uh, what are you smoking in well, this morning? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, I, if you, if you watched... Um, any of the last week's episodes, you know that I've ordered something from Fast Tech, uh, some vaping gear that I'm going to, it's finally arrived. It arrived yesterday, um, got it, I'm really excited. And I kind of had forgotten that with that order, I, I bought a bit of a joke, um, kind of to, to pick on him about the uh, hatchet pipe that he paid $10 <laughs> for, $12 for, however much it smoked him out in Knife Works earlier. And it did not smoke. No. At all. So, so I'm expecting a non-smokable experience right here. Um, I think this was three dollars on on Fast Tech. So here, here is my as an opium pipe, or a, a weed pipe. Only if you put opium and weed in it. Today it's a uh, frog on the frog on the river pipe. This thing is, I don't know. What did you get? Said it aluminum. I know you got a magnet. No. Um. No. You know there's magnets all over the Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one in my vape case. Why? I'll tell you in a week or two. Nope. 
is non-magnetic. <laughs> no, the, the magnet is magnetic. The oh, weed the, pipe the, is... The pipe is not magnetic. Not hey, magnetic. that's not a weed pipe. <clears throat> no, it's a frog on the river pipe. I, now, just so you guys know, those of you who <coughs> have, come, <laughs> have, have gotten up from being in shock, um, you're right. I don't smoke briar pipes. Um, I'm trying to think when the last time was I smoked a briar pipe. Uh, Dr. Graybo. I smoked that Dr. Graybo. That's right. That was not that a was great a CBS, <laughs> CBS that was, sale. That was CBS not a great fire experience. sale. Don't we have like eight thousand of those Dr. Graybos? Yeah, we still? do. This is glad a gr- you bought those. This is a nice pipe. You know what, what? What surprised me about these when I saw them in Nashville? Look at the deep bowl on that sucker. <laughs> What surprised me about these when I saw them in Nashville is, number one, their size, because they're smaller than what I would typically expect from a pipe, and, and, and definitely smaller than the ones that I tend to be attracted to. And they're very light, incredibly light, and I'm not sure how they're pulling that off. Is there a lightweight briar grown somewhere? <clears throat> anyway, Jason has these made in Italy uh, to his specifications, and it turns out his specifications are they need to be able to fit into his vest pocket on his motorcycle. Oh. Hence, Jason's attraction to pipes that tend to be a little bit smaller. That makes sense. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for something that you're going to want to clench, and like in our case where we were having a conversation on a patio outside of a restaurant, and, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't like we were sitting there in silence puffing away for three hours. We were trying different things. That was a perfect size pipe right there. Do I look as ridiculous as I feel? Because I feel really ridiculous. Depends upon how ridiculous you feel, because you really? look awfully ridiculous. It's a cool smoke. <laughs> Until your hand gets heated up. That's a good point. <clears throat> huh. Wow. This is uh this is probably gonna be a thing now. Everybody everybody on YouTube is gonna want to get themselves one of these. Fast Tech. I think it was three dollars. It may not have even been three dollars. Wow. I just, yeah, maybe it was more. I really hope it was not more than three dollars. But it only takes a uh, free delivery that only takes about a month to get to you. <laughs> what? Do they have a minimum order? I mean, can you order a three dollar pipe and it's free delivery? <clears throat> I don't know. I've ordered like ten dollars worth of stuff and have always had free delivery. So I don't know if there's a minimum. <laughs> you are holding that like the way you would hold I, well, an opium pipe. Am I? You're, yeah. I don't know. You're, you're you're holding it like this. <coughs> it's awkward. It's you, it's it's you real smoke thin. There's peace pipe. It's it's real thin, and there's no great way that you want to try. I do not. No. There's no great way to hold this sucker. So I see why they do it that way. So oh. anyway, um, I've got. How was your trip, by the way? The trip was good. Um, I'm getting ready. No, not even getting ready. We're filming this on the weekend, and I'm leaving tomorrow for Houston. So um, I'm going to be uh, be gone yet another week. So I get to be home a whole day and a half mm-hmm. after spending a week in, uh, in Orlando. Orlando was nice. I mean, I, I do these sales training courses for my company with our sales reps, and I can do those courses anywhere. And so what I do is I kind of do the math based on where the reps that are coming would be traveling from yeah. and determine, you know, does it make sense for um, them to come to you, them to come to me, me to go to them, let's find a central location. So also being in February, it made sense to be someplace warmer, right? So I, I start with some of the big locations like um, Las Vegas, Dallas, Orlando, places that I know are going to be warm and actually have a decent uh, infrastructure for bringing tourism in. Yeah. Isn't and it sometimes cheaper to go to those places than than some of the other places? Yeah, oh yeah, because there is so much traffic for that, going yeah. there. That's right. It can be cheaper. And there are some places that are off the beaten path that can be cheaper, too. We, we were in Niagara Falls, um, I want to say <coughs> it was in October. In October, yeah, and that was really, really cheap because that's exactly the time of year no one goes to Niagara Falls. So again, New York side, Canada side, I, I do here the math. There's a difference. But you know, though we were in Orlando, we were out in a in a uh, Hilton property out by the airport, so it wasn't <clears> like we were in Mouse World or anything like right. that. 
And um, mm -hmm. uh, and I do, back to Jay and Jason, I do appreciate them coming down to have dinner with me because um, that evening I gave my coworkers my rental car so they could go and do something. Yeah. And I was right by the You're hotel. Stranded. And so, yeah, basically stranded. And those guys uh, offered to come on down like an hour drive for them. So anyway, um, yeah. Otherwise, it was another, uh, it was like being in another Hampton Inn in the middle of anywhere. You missed uh, Snowmageddon. Uh, yes. Yes. How, how much snow did you guys get here? We probably got, in parts, um, we probably had five or six inches. Hmm. But it was, it warmed up the next day and it, it all became slushy real quick and it, it was, the roads were clear within the, by the afternoon. And so, it was actually worse. What was worse was um, Monday night we got Monday night we got uh, freezing rain. We got a little uh, no 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 it wasn't Monday night it was Tuesday morning early Tuesday morning no one was expecting it it wasn't even predicted on the radar systems and Tuesday morning um, it started snowing and it was a really light dusting but the roads were about twenty degrees so it was cold enough that as it landed on the roads. It was melting and then refreezing into ice. So the roads were black ice. So the air was causing it to melt. The roads right. refreezed it. Wow. So my, my morning commute is right at 30, 35 minutes. It took me an hour and 45 minutes to get to work that day. Hmm. Um, we were driving 10 miles an hour on, on Interstate 40. Or, yeah. Um, and I ended up spinning out. I did a 180 in the middle of the highway. In my four-wheel drive Ford Expedition truck uh wow. spun out <coughs> i had just you. thankfully not i had just passed a six car pile up um maybe i don't know a uh, hundred yards past and was going 10 miles an hour and started to skid tried to turn into it you know didn't slam the brakes or anything and it just my car just slowly spun all the way around mm. the middle of three lanes. Did you go 360 or 180? 180. So you're staring. You're looking, I'm looking back at the eyes. I'm looking at traffic, yeah. Oh, and the, um, I, I tried to back up, but I was just sliding. Some of the emergency traffic crew that were at the six-car pileup were starting to come to see if they, they could give me help. Um, but I was able to, because, because of the accident, cars were backed up there. So I had enough of a window that I was able to turn around. <clears throat> wow. It was rough. That was much worse than than the snow. Did I ever tell you about the 360 I did on the highway mm -hmm. in Dayton? No. It's driving from <coughs> Beaver Creek, which is east of Dayton, into Dayton. And um, it was a rear-wheel drive Mustang. And I'm, I'm driving along on State Route 35, which goes east to west. And I... I'm going over an overpass, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm on a bridge. When all of a sudden, I lost it, and, and my car went 360 degrees, and I pulled it out and continued on, right? So I, I never left my lane. Yeah. <laughs> I never stopped moving forward. But now, all of a sudden, I'm dropping my speed way down. I'm mm -hmm. sure my knuckles were, you know, probably leaving imprints in the steering wheel. My face was white as a ghost, I'm sure. As another car pulls alongside of me, and the guy, look, <coughs> he looks out his window at me, and all I see is him going. <laughs> <laughs> he was impressed. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, all those warnings in North Carolina, every, every bridge you see has a warning that says, bridges freeze before roads. Right. And we never saw those signs in Ohio because everyone knows that, right? Mm. But um, that, that car had too much power. And uh, I was probably going a little faster than I should have. So. Well, we, we always in North Carolina, people freak out about the snow. But what really is bad is the ice. And, and there were, I've never seen that many wrecks on the highway. Um, like I said, it took about four times longer to get to work than usual. Mm -hmm. And there were, I fishtailed ten times, various places along the way. At one point, I was in stand, standing still traffic just inching forward and went to, to inch forward and slid a bit. It's crazy. This so I, is not great. Do not the, recommend The it. pipe or the tobacco? The pipe. 
<laughs> the tobacco tastes like aluminum. <laughs> oh, well, then get some more and put it in something I'm else. Here. Going to. Here's a whatever that is. What is that? Aluminum mixed with opium. Is that the flavor you were going for? No, I don't know. I was going to say, that is, this is a Pony Express, but I think it's not. I think that that's one of the Mark Twain Huck Finn sizes. It's a little bit different size than, uh, than a Pony Express. You know, I smoke that one. <coughs> so I did something interesting last night with my two of my grandsons. We had been talking at one point about an invention called Picrete. Are you familiar with pi- Picrete? I am not. Back at the end of World War II, but while the war was still raging, an inventor in England with the last name Pike got in his head that, you know what what we ought to do is we ought to make boats out of ice. We can make giant, giant aircraft carriers. And he experimented with ice and trying to figure out how to increase the strength, the tensile strength. Mm-hmm. Um, and so on of the ice and make you know, in, improve its impact resistance because you know if it's a boat it might get a hit by a iceberg torpedo or an iceberg and so um, he hit upon a solution that was a combination of ice and sawdust or to be exact um, saw ice cellulose cellulose right that's the the component within the wood that's actually then going to, to bond with the ice. And um, the U.S. government saw enough, uh, had enough interest in it that they made a small-scale test of it. And uh, in the end, though, they decided not, not to do it, partially because the war ended. But you, you've got to be able to have onboard refrigeration to, to do repairs. But that's the thing. You could, make, you could patch a big hole in your hull by just tossing some water and some sawdust on it, and there you go, you're, you're back, right. to, back to solid. Um, so I had, I had talked to my oldest grandson, Smuckers, who's about five and a half now, about this. And so he reminded me that I had said to him that we would experiment the next time we had some snow by mixing some snow, some sawdust and snow together and making a snowman. Unfortunately, as Boyd just pointed out, the snow is already starting to go away in a pretty big way. But we found a pretty a pretty good patch next to the side yard where we're mostly uh, in the shade. So last night, Smuckers and BG and I went out and mixed some sawdust in with some snow. I didn't read that picture, but was really read the picture. I was no, I don't do that. But was really curious why why you guys were playing with sand (laughs) in your yard. That's what it looked like. So that's what we were doing. We were mixing sawdust in with snow. They decided after trying that they weren't going to make a snowman. Instead, they made a mound or a pile of snow and then a pile of this pikerite, as it's called. It's named after Mr. Pike. Right. So P-Y-K-R-E-T-E. If you want to Google it, check out the Wikipedia article on it or do a Google image search because a whole bunch of schools, engineering schools around the world, have been experimenting with pikerite. Really? The Japanese and the folks in Finland have been using uh, a method to build domes. And they'll, they'll basically blow up a big bubble that itself has some texture, kind of like a geodesic mm-hmm. dome that has the triangles. And then they'll, they'll mix a slurry of the sawdust and, and water. And when it's freezing, they'll spray it onto this balloon. Yeah. And it creates this dome that's... That's safe to go inside. That's cool. And uh, th- there was a situation that one of the one of them had where they were fill- uh, spraying it on, and it wasn't quite solid yet, and wasn't built up yet when the balloon deflated a little bit, causing the dome to crack. Well, they blew it back up, sprayed it some more, but by that time it had some flaws in it. Right. And uh, they were fortunate that no one was in the dome two days later when it collapsed. Wow. But I mean, it's a building that they're building yeah. with this stuff. But there's these giant archways that some of these schools have built. There's even a picture on one of their blogs of a pile of, of icy sawdust in the summer after the winter build using pike reef. Wow. Yeah, so it, it really has some great insulating properties. So um, I'll post some pictures over on Instagram and maybe on the uh, Aristocob Facebook page of the progress of that. One last thing to mention. Um, I announced 
this week uh, a contest that J D I G H S X and I are having, where we are competing over the month of March, uh, building a shop clock. Each of us building a shop clock. Yeah. So we were talking about how neither of us are getting enough time in our shop. And ironically, that led to this conversation about, well, why don't we build a clock? And that way we can spend time in our clock, in our time in our shop. Really big clock, guys. Really big. Building, building some time in our shop. To make your clock out of pycrete. Ooh. Thank you for bringing that back around, boy. Full circle. So uh, follow, if you would, if you're not already subscribed, follow my other channel, my other other channel. Wood Wishes. No, not that one. The other other one, which is Mr. Tool Hunter. That's M-R-T-O-O-L Hunter. Mr. And Wood Wishes. Hashtag Hollywood Homer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be posting videos every single week through the month of March, both he and I, as we compete. And we've got us an official judge. Uh, besides you, you guys will be able to vote on him as well. But Mr. Izzy Swan, who is a, uh, a really, really neat guy on YouTube, does some amazing woodworking projects and a really engineering projects out of wood. Um, he's going to be a, a judge. So uh, go check out Izzy's channel if you're not familiar with him. You know what we should have done? Uh, all sorts of things. Uh, I've gotten <laughs> eggs on our biscuits. That is true. We should have compared this to... What, is, what was this? Mississippi River or no. Frogmorton on the something or other? Yeah. We should have compared it to the non-compressed and done a side-by-side -side to well, see what would, differences you come would have up to take in the those, compression. You have to take those two tobaccos, blend them in the same pr proportions that he blended them before yeah. he compressed them. Yeah. But uh, Jason himself, bearing witness to it, right before he smoked his cake... He did smoke that blend and absolutely insists that it mellowed it out and, mm. and, and did, did something special. One of the things it does is it, it it's one of the best ways of getting different tobacco blends to actually marry, to blend, and to become mm. something different, right? You, you Give smoke, it a time to marinate. You smoke those tobaccos where you get, oh, there's a little bit of vanilla. Right. Oh, there's a little something else, right? Yeah. Well, this this really compresses it. When I used to buy tobacco at the wharf and they would mix some up for me, they would tell me, put this under the seat of your car mm -hmm. or under your, your car. In Ohio, a lot of folks back then used to have these cushions in their car seats just because most of us had vinyl seats. And mm -hmm. this was really common. We all had these. They would say, put it underneath that for a couple of days. So you're driving on it, sitting on it mm -hmm. in the heat of the day, and it would, it would do the same thing. You can do the same thing with, with e-juice, too. You sit, to, sit to, on yeah, oh, Yep. Um, to let it steep. To let it sit for a few days, air it a little bit, um, because when it's freshly, freshly mixed, it's the same oh, there, deal. There are those guys that put them in the oven and who put it in the water. Crockpot. Uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Um, glove compartment in your car on a hot day. Crazy. All those. That helps to speed steep it. Otherwise, you can wait about two weeks for most. But same deal. The flavors just have time to, to cook together a little bit better. So that makes sense. Well, I will tell you this. I don't like English blends. I don't like Mississippi River. I don't care for the Frog Morton products, right? They're just, mm -hmm. to me, they're just too much. I'm, I'm enjoying this, mm -hmm. right? So good. obviously it's done something. Mm -hmm. So. J D I G H S X and Jason Dagner have both done videos on their channels compressing tobacco. Uh, J did it with the leftovers of the homegrown tobacco he grew a couple years ago. Oh, cool! And uh, he was using uh, a, kind of a homemade casing that he was adding some sweetness to his, and um, it's really kind of cool to see how that comes out. I got a sample of. Not the cake from Jay, but his homegrown tobacco. And uh, that was the encouragement I, I needed to try to grow some last year, which didn't work famously, mm. but I'm going to grow some this year. We'll try again. Cool. All right, let's wrap this up, boy. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank Jason for the tobacco. Thanks, Jason, for the pipe and the tobacco. Yeah. 
Keep an eye out on Mr. Tool Hunter for the clock building competition. That's going to be over the next month, right? Yes. All right, cool. Good luck. Thank you. See you guys next week. Make it a great week, guys.